Good morning, West Pacific Market Analytics, and it's Glenn here. Everything's right on path. Uh, let's not waste a lot of time on the intro. I'm going to be around working all day on Friday here at my computer. We'll have a more detailed report going into the weekend. So let's not waste a lot of time here. Let's go to the disclaimer. These charts and updates for educational and entertainment purposes only. Now, this is really important what we're going to be viewing here, so let me show you. The first model we're looking at here is the Dow, or actually the short of the Dow, SDAO. Uh, now, we're looking at this. We, uh, as a group, we have a trade in this stock. We're targeting 25 for SDAO. We got in down here at the low in the 15s, and we're gunning for 25 here pretty quick. That's going to be one heck of a trade from the 15s to 25. So at 25, you can see we're going to hit our gate here. This is where we had our last failure. And you notice back at the top of the, or I should say, yeah, actually the top of the market, which is inverse here, you can notice what we almost hit the, uh, the, uh, the gate here. I call this the gate. This is the gatekeeper model. And we failed here. And then you notice we almost hold the, held the dot curve here, and we held the dot curve back here. So this breakdown is justified. I'll show you that in just a moment. But to get to 25, it puts us perfectly back into pricing into the V channel where we must price. Now, let me show you why it did that breakdown. You notice here was this last push lower. We had to hit the pink line. It didn't bend over yet, and now it's bended over. So what I call this, this is our V channel here, and I've talked to you about V channel. Uh, this is a technical analytical approach that I use in my modeling. Excuse me for the beeps there. That's over on the Discord platform. I should turn that off. Uh, but I've got it running. It doesn't matter. Anyway, you can see we hit our pink line trade here right here this is the low so we're not going any lower this is a major low here and we're going to see this across the board now let's go through a few of these now we're taking a look at sqqq here you see on sqq same idea you notice what's interesting on sqq you notice as we were working down we had trend working up we had velocity building so notice velocity wasn't even building to price till we got right here and this is all the way back in april uh, roughly April, May, oh, I'd say April 2023. And then you notice the trend was building and we are working down to both the trend, both velocity right here. Then notice how this first rally, we went right up the trend and then we got this final flush because we had to get the breaking flatlining curve. I call this a finishing wedge in the V channel. So we see this also in SQQ and we'll notice on the SQQ trade, there's our pink line hit that we saw right here in this model. You see the pink line hit right here. This is our low. SQQ is not going any lower than that. And then notice here what's interesting on SQQ. Notice before our low in the finishing was your velocity was already building. Now when I talk about velocity, remember that's liquidity coming into the market. We need to be able to measure not so much liquidity, but the flows of liquidity and whether liquidity is coming in or out. So SQQ, we can see the liquidity starting to come in here back in February, working down the V channel, breaking finally to hit our low, which was more important to see that on the weekly model. Now remember, this model here is a weekly model, okay? And then we're going to go shorter term to look at it. So you notice what happened is we finally came down, hit our low, and as that was happening, we had the liquidity building, and notice how price is working very much up the trend now. <clears throat> so in the shorter term model, really, all that matters is that velocity continues to build and trend continues to build. And notice we got oversold to trend with this last few days when we had the market <clears throat> rally and SQQ brought, dropped, dropped back to trend. So that's normal. You notice we're very black again in the futures, and I expect it to be pretty ugly going into Friday. <clears throat> Let's keep going on here. We can see this everywhere. Now we're getting into, uh, we're looking at, excuse me, what are we looking at here? Uh, SQQ. Yeah, we're on SQQ, SQQ. There's the finishing wedge on SQQ, same idea. Okay, let's keep going. We're at Biddy. We're looking at Biddy here. Oh, man, I got these all mixed up, guys. It's been a tiring day. Now, here's Biddy. Oh, wait, this is Socks. Excuse me. Here, I wanted to put Socks in here. Now, Socks, same idea. You can see we hit the low on the finishing wedge. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Just early in the morning here, I want to get these out. This is SOXS. We're also in this trade. You notice we've had the finishing wedge here in Socks. So we see we have the finishing wedge completed. SDAO, SQQ, and, so and Socks. That's pretty significant. 
This is a major, major high we've just had, okay? And again here, we got into the Sox trade back here on that pink line hit. And here's the pink line hit where we got in on the 27s. We've already got up to 46. We haven't locked profits yet. We're still riding this one up. We've already almost doubled our money on this one and it's still pushing up. You can see the curve now riding up. You can see the velocity building. There's no reason to exit this trade. And I'm gonna be talking more uh, around an idea of this bottle I showed for Estelle. We're gonna see our initial targets take it off. Uh, let's go here, here's Biddy. I'm telling you right now, the top is in in Bitcoin. You notice how we got a double low here on the channel in Biddy, and why that happened, we had this first low, but you notice that the liquidity or the velocity was still coming out. So that, that was not a good situation. So you see, we came up, we tested the dot curve again, and then we came down finally to a second low here, right there in liquidity while the trend was building, okay? So you can see now the trend is building, the liquidity is building, Biddy is ready to rise. So you wanna be playing now a counter trend in the Bitcoin space. And let's finish off here with NVIDIA. You notice here, NVIDIA stopped right on the gate here that held price because the gate has been open since November. You notice as long as the gate was open, price was working up the gate here, working up the trend, working up with the mock trade. We got mock breaking down now. Now, if this gate goes from being an open position to you see it back here, this is when the gate closes when it breaks below the middle line. Now, if this breaks below the gate, that would then put 620 in play for NVIDIA. I think we're going to hold at 620. I think NVIDIA getting down to 620 could be a great place to look for a, a, a first low in this market as it sells off from the wave five top. I'm going to watch NVIDIA as an indicator of where we want to go. Now, it could go a lot lower. And again, once we get to 620, it will depend on how this, tra uh, this trend is developed as that comes. So I'm definitely looking at it breaking and getting down to 620 on NVIDIA, and then we'll see what it wants to do. That's no recommendation for a trade. We're not playing this one. We don't play with fire. But if you're long it, you want to be very, very careful. So that's all I've got for you today. I'm out of here. Have yourself a great Thursday. I'll be back in for Friday update. And again, as I said, I'm going to be around on Friday. So I'm going to be running a lot of models for a weekend report. So tune in for that. I'm out of here. Thanks for tuning in. Glad out.